today on Santa Monica Update. Looking for family fun activities in the summertime? Well, you can start right here at the Museum of Flying. Full story coming up. Coming up, it's the summer celebration of Tongva Park. Coming up, we'll check out the Santa Monica Convention and Visitor Bureau's new digs here on Main Street. We have these lighthearted stories as well as some important news from the city of Santa Monica in our show today. I'm Tamara Henry. Santa Monica Update, your source for local news in Santa Monica. Santa Monica Update starts now. Hello, everybody. We're disappointed. Some people didn't get the news that we're in a drought. Well, we're in a drought. And a while back, the city of Santa Monica asked its residents to begin saving water, to cut back by 10%. And what happened? Water use went up by 2%. People are using more, not less. Now the city is considering requiring a mandatory 20% reduction in water use per person. Just to be crystal clear here, this is a drought. Everyone needs to cut back their water usage now and fix those dripping faucets. For more info about the serious situation in Santa Monica, go to smgov.net slash OSE and click water on the left. Looking for something different to do with the kids before they go back to school? Well, for something local, fun, and educational, why not try the Museum of Flying? And by the way, they recently launched two new summer discount programs, making it affordable. Daniel Farias has the story. Summer is here in Southern California. The kids are out of school and looking for new, fun, and family-friendly things to do can sometimes be a challenge. Luckily, we're in Santa Monica, and that means something exciting is always just around the corner. Case in point, the Museum of Flying at the Santa Monica Airport. This archive of aviation artifacts welcomes the casual flyer and the seasoned pilot alike. And the best part is, it's right here in your own backyard. I think that during the summer months that this is a great option for families because we call it edutainment. And what we mean by that is it's very educational, but it's also very entertaining. So kids can come in here and learn a lot about the history of aviation and uh, the evolution of aircraft design, but they also have a chance to get hands-on in the cockpits that we have. Originally established in 1979, the museum opened its doors at its current location in 2012. Since then, the museum has continued to expand and evolve, offering new exhibits, displays, and special events. We have aircraft ranging from a Wright Flyer replica to aircraft of the jet age. But what we also have is an amazing collection of aviation art, memorabilia, artifacts. We also have a great theater here on the second floor that features uh, many historical test flights, uh, documentaries, famous aviation themed films. Our theater is fairly large, it seats about 40 people, but the best part during the summertime is our theater is air conditioned. The most recent developments at the museum include a new display honoring the inaugural inductees of the newly established California Aviation Hall of Fame, as well as a new mural project currently in progress titled Fly Navy, which depicts the various Douglas aircraft used on Navy carriers during World War II. Lastly, the Museum of Flying is now offering two summer discount programs, making a visit to this hangar of aviation history a no-brainer. What we have right now throughout the summer is what we're calling a uh, summer family fun four-pack to the museum. Two adults and two children on Wednesdays and Thursdays, $20 admission for all four. That's normally a $32 value. And then on Fridays, we're having what we call Friday Flights special, which is uh, a, an adult admission and a ride in our flight simulator, which is, by the way, 360 degrees of pitch and roll for only $12, and that's an $18 value. For kids, it's normally $14 to have an admission and a flight in the simulator, and on this special program, it's only $8 for the kids to not only come through the museum, but also fly in the simulator. Well, there's always something new to discover here at the Museum of Flying, and their summer program makes it a great, low-cost solution for finding some family fun during the summer months. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Daniel Farias. Be sure not to miss out on the great discounts now being offered by the Museum of Flying this summer. For more information, including hours of operation, special events, party rentals, and more, visit museumofflying.com. 
Tongva Park is celebrating its first season of cultural programming. We were honored to attend a family-friendly morning of Native American storytelling and craft workshops. Welcome to Tongva Park. This is the um, second in a series of events uh, which the city hopes uh, will enliven this gorgeous park with uh, cultural and learning opportunities, some of them surprising and interesting, things that you might not have expected here. The children's play area of Tongva Park was alive and filled with learning from the native elders. Ted Garcia is a Vietnam veteran who worked for the Postal Service for 37 years. In his culture, he is a stone carver and spiritual advisor for a powwow in Santa Clarita. Ever since he was young, he always had a second sense about things and a special connection to nature. When we buried my mother, uh, a lot of my friends came up to me after the ceremony and said, where did you get all those hawks to release? That they just came. You know? Unexplainable wonders. Both brothers, Ted and Dennis, are storytellers and song carriers. Many cultures that were here first lost their rights, but thanks to those who were willing to stand up, we have not lost our heritage. My cousin Charlie Cook is a, a big advocate of, of tradition and culture and sites. He, 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 he fought with so many people, not native and non-native alike, and the national park systems to make sure that things were preserved to, so that uh, we had a place to maybe go celebrate and do things because uh, without people like that, you know, they, 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 we wouldn't be standing in this park right now, which is named Tongva Park. Originally using soapstone from Catalina, Julia Bogany taught us how to make talc necklaces with beads of symbolic colors. The Huggable Elder also teaches how to make wood carvings and the ancient art of using plants to create toys and games. We use the outside of the black walnut for the dye in our hair. That's how our hair was so black. You know, it's kind of like Clara Wins. <laughs> and then we use, and then we ate the walnut, and then we made games with the wal with the walnut shells afterwards. So it's like you used every single part of it. The Santa Monica Cultural Affairs Division supports innovative programs like this one to nurture the local arts and create engaging cultural events so that we never forget where we came from. The fact that we're still here, you know, in history they have us disappearing in the 1900s and then in the 1950s we're back. <laughs> Today's celebration is all about getting back to your roots and remembering who you are. Reporting for Santa Monica Update, I'm Tamara Henry. I had a meaningful, mystical experience. And did you know that a limited number of Tongva Park benches are now available to purchase on a first-come basis? They include a personalized plaque, which would be a wonderful way to show support for Tongva Park and memorialize a loved one or special event. More info is at tongvapark.squarespace.com. It's summertime in SoCal, and that means Santa Monica is the place to be. Our beautiful beaches are a major draw for tourists, especially during these peak travel times. The Santa Monica Convention and Visitors Bureau recently opened a brand new visitor center, providing all the info necessary to get the world-class experience that we're known for. Reporter Daniel Farias has more. When you're in Los Angeles and you ask the question, which way to the beach, all roads point to Santa Monica. It's one of the top 10 beach cities in the world, and during the summertime, people come from all over to find out why. The Santa Monica Convention and Visitors Bureau works tirelessly to promote our fair city and engage visitors when they arrive with a warm welcome and all the information they'll need to get the most out of their stay. And the recent opening of their brand new visitor center on Main Street gives them a new way to roll out the welcome mat in Santa Monica style. Well today we're actually of course celebrating Santa Monica and summer. Um, but we're also celebrating our newest visitor center, which is located right here in the heart of Main Street at the Edgemar Center. So here at the visitor center, we work to just sort of inform anybody that sort of comes to our door looking for information, whether it be a local resident who has people coming in town just to stay with them, or if it happens to be somebody from out of town looking for information on how to explore the city here. A little known fact is that the CVB is not just for tourists. All services they provide are also readily available for local residents, and there are even a few perks that apply to locals only. 
residents can not only come here to learn information about what's going on in our own backyard, but they can also send their friends and family who are visiting from out of town to come and have that true Santa Monica experience. And this summer, we're launching an Instagram campaign to get everyone a little more involved and excited about what's going on around town. Uh, the front window display of our new visitor center, you'll see a hashtag, see Santa Monica. If you hashtag those um, photos that are your favorite of events going on around town, you have the opportunity to be showcased in our window display. And we'll be announcing other contests and opportunities to win prizes throughout the year. Another new program that locals can literally hop onto is the Santa Monica Free Ride Program, a fleet of shuttles that traverse the top spots in Santa Monica, and as the name suggests, it's free. We partnered with three hotels in Santa Monica, so they are hotel sponsored, free for guests, free for residents, and they travel all to the best places in Santa Monica. Santa Monica is a small town that makes a big impression. There's a lot to see and do here, so whether you're from around the world or around the block, stop by and check out the CVB's brand new visitor center. Come and say hi, we're really friendly here and we have a lot of resources at your disposal so if you just want to come in and just figure out what's going on in the city or if you're new and just sort of visiting, like we have a variety of resources. So whether you're looking for something new to do or giving yourself a well-earned staycation, be sure to check out the Visitor Center here on Main Street. It's your one-stop shop. For Santa Monica Update, I'm Daniel Farias. It's always fun to become a tourist in your own hometown, especially when it's Santa Monica. Stop by the new Visitor Center for friendly and free information or visit the CVB online at santamonica.com. After listening to customer feedback about the new bus stops, the Big Blue Bus is responding and making changes. And although construction is already underway, the Big Blue Bus is adjusting the design of the new bus stops. Changes include redesign of the seats and their placement. Customer demands for additional sunshades are also being addressed. Modifications will include more seating and additional or expanded canopies where space permits. New seating features will allow better ease of use for riders requiring support to lift themselves up from a seat. And where feasible, low volume stops currently designed with two seats and one canopy will be upgraded to medium volume stops, adding more seating and canopies. The Big Blue Bus is also considering modification of the existing seat design to improve comfort and support, possibly with wider seats and higher backs. Look for these modifications to happen in the next few months. If you're involved in the creative industries here in Santa Monica, you know it sometimes helps to have another conceptual tool. One such concept now on view is the emotional relationship between light and color as explored by Robert Swain at the Santa Monica Museum of Art. The exhibit runs through August 23rd. For a map and free parking info, go to smmoa.org. Do donations to food banks drop off in the summer? We wondered, so we asked the Westside Food Bank. Yes, they said, summer is their slowest time in terms of donations, and this summer is tougher than most. Donations of fresh fruit and veggies are way down because of the drought. You can address food insecurity in the West Side by donating to their virtual food drive. It's simple, really. Go online to westsidefoodbankca.org and click on How to Help. Then click on Virtual Food Drive, and there you are. Say you want to donate eggs, so you buy 15 dozen eggs to be given out to hungry families. What does it cost, you ask? $18. See, it's easy to make it easy for someone else by paying it forward. You can feel pretty good about helping make a tangible difference in people's lives, and you've done it without leaving home. So remember, westsidefoodbankca.org. Thank you for your generosity. Well, that's it for this edition of Santa Monica Update. The annual Santa Monica Yard Sale is coming up on August 23rd from 8 to 3 p.m. Why not get your neighbors together and have a huge sale? Want free advertising for your yard sale? Go to smgov.net slash r3 and register your yard sale address. I'm Tamara Henry. Speaking for all of us at City TV, thank you for watching. See you next time.